back to My View TV, the people's platform, the home of undiluted news, reviews, updates, and your daily dose of entertainment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple, me. Well, my people, hope everybody know, okay? Hope everybody know, right? Yeah, look, I move on and go down to the Supreme Court. Ball to ball, come and chip on the one dang gang trial. The defense in the Wandon Klansman gang trial earlier today continued its cross examination of the retired police who initially started the investigation into the alleged criminal enterprise. One defense attorney suggests the retired police is fabricating evidence in an effort to get convictions. More in this report. A retired police witness in the Wandon Klansman gang trial previously testified how he interviewed over 300 members of the alleged gang during his time in the St. Catherine North Police Division as a gang investigator. He subsequently told the court that he charged several of the members but only managed to get two convictions for breaches of the anti-gang legislation. Defense attorney Alexander Shaw, who represents three of the defendants, to include the lone female Stephanie Christie, alias Mumma, accused the witness of fabricating evidence for the purposes of seeking more convictions under his belt. The witness had said he first met Christie in September of 2017 when she offered him $100,000 for the release of the reputed gang leader Andre Blackman Bryan. Shaw, however, disputed this. Shaw also contended that his client did not tell the witness that she was Liberty Coke's baby's mother. The witness said he maintained contact with Christie from then, using her as a human source to get information about the gangsters, including Jason Brown, the defendant he identified in court as City Puss. The retired police said he went to Horizon Roman and center on October 12, 2017, and charged Brown for breaches of the anti-gang law and extortion. Brown, he says, made his first court appearance on October 21 that same year, but Shaw argued that the date cannot be correct because that day was a Saturday. The witness says the dates are accurate to the best of his recollection. Furthermore, Shaw said he obtained a copy of the visitor's book at Horizon and the witness's name was nowhere in sight on the date mentioned before. Shaw is convinced the witness is misleading the court. The trial resumes on Wednesday morning. Well, on the people near a gold in the clown set, the man said, darker days lie ahead. Mark Golda described the government message to return to prosperity out of the COVID-19 pandemic as a pure fantasy. Who believe him? Who not buy another fantasy, Jeff? The Minister of Finance says we're doing well. That is a fantasy. Who are the we of which he is speaking? Not the people in my constituency. Not the people in East Rural St. Andrew or the people in Southeast St. Elizabeth. Only a few, the well-connected and the fortunate are making money and living well. Many Jamaicans are living hand to mouth. They can't pay the bills. They are feeling the burdens of an economy pressured by two years of COVID-19 and now the Russia-Ukraine war. That is their reality. For the working poor, their meager salaries will not stretch far enough to cover the price increases. So very dark days are ahead for our people, Madam Speaker. The country is indeed on the brink of a deep crisis, but this budget that has been tabled by the government has very few real solutions to this crisis. It is clear that the budget was put together without a strategic response to protect Jamaicans from the economic fallout of the war in Ukraine. People are facing lick after lick after lick. Push on the lick, Prime Minister. Push on the crisis, I say. Last week, the Minister of Finance tried a thing with a tune from Anthony Ro Red Rose, but he got the lyrics wrong. Well, Minister, you're not here, but I'm going to send it right back at you. Can't say me never did a warn you. It is you who need the warning. Minister Clark, not me. Can't say me never did I warn you. You control the purse strings. Don't hold them so tight at a time when the people are suffering and the society is on the brink. Last week, Tuesday, the minister beat his chest and colleagues on that side beat their desks as he announced that there will be no new taxes. I say to the people of Jamaica, do not be fooled by the hype. The government plans to collect $99 billion more in taxes this coming fiscal year than the year just ending. 99 billion more taxes 
from the people. Imagine, this is happening in a year when many have not recovered from the COVID recession and many more are facing hunger and suffocation from the effects of the war in Ukraine. $99 billion more in taxes, Madam Speaker. This is unconscionable in a time like this. Of the $99 billion of additional taxes, all he is giving back in this crisis is $2.75 billion. At a time like this, when suffocation is on the land and the people are close to the brink, that $2.75 billion is a mere 0.1% of GDP, one-tenth of 1% 1 of the country's gross domestic product. It is a drop in the bucket, and it is not enough to meet the needs of our people, as its impact will be minuscule. I would support additional expenditures of, of up to 2% of GDP to address the critical needs facing the society. That's about $40 billion. It is time to focus on helping our people. It is not the time for excessive fiscal conservatism. The government is playing with fire by leaving vulnerable populations unprotected in this vortex of high inflation and the unbearable cost of living. With real GDP growth of 3.5% projected for the coming fiscal year, this expenditure that I am proposing would not worsen the debt to GDP ratio. We are proposing that for the duration of the inflation crisis, the government caps the ad valorem SCT on fuel at an oil price of $67.50 US per barrel, and also the equivalent for the price of LNG, so that prices of those crucial commodities that go above the budgeted price do not result in higher taxes on fuel. Many saw the unveiling of the new banknotes for what it really was last week, Tuesday. A distraction from the real issues that are biting the people. It was just another fantasy. How do new banknotes help our people who are trying to survive day to day, living from hand to mouth? How is it relevant at a time like this? Madam Speaker, it will do nothing to help the people ride out the storm. As one man told me, it won't put one more dumpling in the pot. I rise on a point of order. At no time was there ever a consideration regarding the well-known and close relationship that I have had with Mr. Siaga as an impetus or a reason or a cause for him to be added to our currency. Mr. Siaga is on the currency because he deserves to be there. Many professionals and business people are where they are today because Michael Manley pushed open so many doors in the 1970s. From our perspective, in that era, the other leader did his best with the help of outside forces like the CIA yes. to destabilize my command this effort. Jamaica paid a heavy price. Many, many of our people were killed in the resulting political violence. The economy was severely damaged by capital flight, hoarding, and the hostile propaganda of a conservative media. All of that was about turning back progress. 